Hello and thank you for joining me today. This is Corey from the Box Scholar YouTube channel and the WellRoundedPianist.com. Uh, this is a video on sight reading. Uh, as many of you know, I'm sort of the uh, authority on sight reading now since my uh, sight reading and harmony book here has, has done very well in the last couple of years. Uh, I invite you to uh, get this book if you don't have it already. It's a nice, thick, spiral-bound book here with lots and lots and lots of examples here in which I teach a systematic way of sight reading using Bach chorales. I call it the five-tier system of four-part hymns and chorales. It's a highly effective system of learning sight read from the ground level up and uh, I have also um, some smaller volumes, beginning, intermediate, upper intermediate, advanced, and concert level uh, volumes that are a little cheaper in price than, than this. This is what I call the complete edition. This is by far the best seller, uh, or has been the best seller the past couple of years uh, on the Box Scholar website, and I have links below this video where you can get this book um, you can get it in PDF format which is about half the price of the of the hard copy and then you can order the hard, hard copy book shipped anywhere in the world so now that I am the uh, I guess the official authority on sight reading and by the way um, I just to let everybody know I am a really good sight reader there are books that have been written about sight reading by people who are not good sight readers or weren't good sight readers to begin with. Maybe they improved their sight reading skills. I've always been a really, really good sight reader. Uh, it's always been one of my strong points because of, I've, of my vast repertoire. I think the more music you learn, the better you get at sight reading. So, you know, as as good as this book is, it's not really the, necessarily the magic pill on to become a better sight reader, but it will give you the tools to build up your sight reading skills, uh, especially in vertical type music. So um, my sight reading skills have always been really good, and that's what has enabled me to learn so much music. You know, I have now on YouTube, I think, about 12 to 1,300 videos. Uh, back in the early years of my YouTube uh, production, back in 2008 through about 2012, I was putting out probably two videos every week, averaging two videos a week, all memorized. Uh, my memory skills have always always been good as well but lately I've been just playing with the music because I'm, I guess I'm just too lazy to memorize things anymore and I like to read the music. So this video today is, is on where your eyes should be, where your eyes should be when you're sight reading or reading music. Now first of all let's clarify reading and sight reading and I think I point this out in my sight reading and harmony book reading music is if you've seen it before. I have in front of me a song without words by Mendelssohn, which I've been practicing, so it just happens to be here. So I'm going to use this as an example, but this applies to any piece of music. And reading is when you've seen this before. Okay, so I've seen this many times before. If I start playing it, okay, I've seen it before, but I'm actually even though it is memorized, and I could sit down and probably play the whole thing pretty much memorized right now, I'm reading the music. It's not sight reading. Sight reading is only if the very, very first time you see something. If you've never seen it before, that's sight reading. But really, reading and sight reading are basically the same thing. If I, this is memorized, but I like to read it. So I, I fan the pages out, or I open the book, and I start reading it. Now, whether 
I'm sight reading, whether it's the first time I see it or whether it's the hundredth time I've seen it, it doesn't matter. You're, I'm still reading it the same way. So sight reading is the same as reading. The only difference is sight reading, you, you won't really know the notes as well. And <clears throat> you'll be struggling a little more with the rhythms, perhaps. Where should your eyes be? Now, I hear a lot of teachers and students saying, or a lot of teachers especially, you know, you'll, you'll hear that, the old adage by teachers, never take your eyes off the music. Always look at the music. Never look at your fingers. That is absolutely patently false. I do not agree with that at all. I think maybe in my early years of teaching, when I was younger, like in my 20s, I probably would tell students that because that's what I heard. But really, when you think about it, that's not true at all. Okay, I'm going to go through some of this song without words. I'm going to analyze, sort of uh, think out loud at what I'm doing, where my eyes are going. Okay, so I'm going to start. My eyes are right there. So it's almost vertical with the music right here. I'm going to look down, place my fingers in the correct position to start. And uh, by the way, I'm going to pretend like I'm sight reading. I'm going to pretend like I've never seen this music before and that I'm sight reading it. Okay, so I have my fingers set into the right positions at the beginning. Okay, I'm going to look here. Play really slow. this introduction, this is Opus 19 number one by the way, all of that introduction for two measures is pretty much in one hand position. So once I get my hand position set, I don't have to look down because I'm not moving. All I'm, I might be just a slight adjustment of a finger or two, but I'm not, I'm not actually moving my hands anywhere. the introduction. Now, this is one of the biggest changes in hand position in the whole piece. I'm lifting up and I'm going over here. Basically, you're lifting up your hands and you're replacing them almost an octave higher to start the melody. Now, that time, that split second that you're moving your hands your eyes can go down. But here's, here's the thing, here's the catch. Do not move your neck. Okay, so uh, poor sight readers will do this. They'll do, they'll go, they'll move their neck down. <clears throat> they'll look down, then they're lost. <laughs> then when they look back up again, oh, where was I? they don't know where to look. So the way to get around that problem is to move your eyes. So you see how my eyes are looking down? My neck is, my head and neck aren't moving or hardly at all. And the eye and my eye socket is going from here to here, here to here. So I go here, my eyes, you can see my eyes looking down. My eyes are looking down, I get my new position. Then right after that, right after I get my position, I look, my eyes go up again. And you have to remember where you are. I was at the end of the first line when that happened. So when I look back, I'm gonna be at the beginning of the second line, or the second system. So let's start that again, I'm in the second measure here. are going to temporarily look down so I can get the position, and my eyes look back up again. Now, all of this first phrase, that first phrase, your my hands are pretty much in position. So you don't have to look down or look up for that first phrase. So you have... Now, the second phrase here... It, it's a pretty big jump, 
like you have to change positions. Your, your hands are going up and you're going into position. So that's another place where your eyes and their sockets will move down. Your eyes will move down. Eyes temporarily down to get your new position to make sure your fingers are on the right keys. Then you can look up again. Now here's another change, but this one is less, so it's not really a big hand position change, but I can look down anyway just to make sure I get the beginning of that phrase. Look back up. I didn't have to look down once, but you'll realize that even when your eyes are looking here, the corner of your eye, where the bottom of your eye can still see, you're still seeing what you're doing. So you don't have to totally be 100% looking there in order to see it. Have you ever played ball or frisbee or something? If you throw a ball, you, you don't have to be facing the ball in order to see it's coming at you. If a ball, a, a, if a ball is coming at you, if somebody throws a ball sideways for, uh, to your side, you can see it through the corner of your eye. You can see it through the corner of your eye. You can see something just sort of, I can, even if my eyes are going here, I can still see at least 50%. I can see sort of have a good idea of what my fingers are doing down here. change in hand position, I'm going to move my eyes down and look back up again. to get that octave. I look down a little bit so I can get that jump, but I look right back up again. Now I'm on the second page. that few phrases right there, it wasn't even necessary at all to look down because Mendelssohn is, was such a great composer and for the piano that everything just lies well under the fingers. So it, you also have to play great composers' music. If you're, if you're playing the composers who really knew how to write for the piano, for the keyboard, uh, usually you have to look down less because it just fits the fingers better. If you've ever played piano music by composers who aren't really, weren't good pianists, or just, there were good composers perhaps, but didn't happen to write well for the piano perhaps, uh, then it can be harder because they didn't really know how the, how the instrument works and how the fingers lie on the keys. So what you need to learn to do when you're sight reading is your eyes can go anywhere. Here, here's your eyes. Your eyes can go down, they can go up. They can go down, they can go up. They can see sideways. But you're never moving your head up and down like this. You're never like here, and then you have to look up, and then look down, and then look up right here. Uh, there was an old, uh, now I'm going to start to show my age, just a show on TV called All in the Family. 
It was very popular in the 70s. It was hilarious. One of the best TV shows, I think, ever. It was a sitcom on TV. And uh, the, the wife of Archie Bunker, Edith Bunker, uh, in their opening song, Edith would be sit, sat at the piano and they sang a song together. And it's funny because I always call this the Edith Bunker technique of sight reading. She, she goes like this and she's looking down and looking up and looking down while she's playing her song. Uh, that's what you don't want to do. You do not want to use the Edith Bunker technique of sight reading. You want your eyes very very subtly to look up or look down and, and then that's how you will have success with sight reading or reading. So remember sight reading and reading are really one and the same thing and the more you read this is another point that I, I don't think I made earlier the more you actually read like, you know, this is like the thousandth time I've, I've seen this. I've played it a million times. I've taught it a lot. Uh, I've, it's basically memorized. But I like to read the music, even though it's memorized. So I have the music here in front of me. So reading, the more reading you do of pieces you actually know and even have memorized, perhaps, the more reading you do, the better your sight reading will become. So to become a better sight reader, it's not true that you, you only need to practice sight reading. It's not true that you should only play things you've never seen before. But it is true that you need to read a lot of music, even pieces you have memorized. So here's what you need to do. Make a, a long list of all of the pieces you've played or if you've played too many to write down, just write a dozen of them down. And <clears throat> these are pieces that you maybe have memorized, really, that they're performance ready. Make yourself sit down and read the music. Even if something's memorized, make yourself open the book or your iPad or tablet, however you look at the music, make yourself read the music. So even though this is memorized, I'm making myself read it as if it were the first time I've seen it. So whenever you read a piece of music, you need to read it as if it were the first time you've seen it. Don't take anything for granted. And, and, and with the eyes, where the eyes should go, depends on the whether you need to pick up your hands and change positions. If you're in one position, you pretty much don't need to look down. You can just look here. So, to make a long story short, that old adage that you hear piano teachers say, never look at your fingers, always look at the music, is absolutely false. I mean, in, there is some truth in that. There is a kernel of truth in that, but that is not true at all. I don't know any time I've read a piece of music where I've not looked down at my fingers, even if I've played it a thousand times and I happen to have it memorized. So there is a flow. The better you get at reading, the better you'll get at sight reading. Remember, your eyes move in their sockets and don't move your head up and down. Read as much music as possible and your sight reading will automatically get better through time. So I hope that you got something from this video. Uh, look at the links below this video and uh, you can visit me on the Well-Rounded Pianist where I have weekly uh, new content there uploaded, much more so than I do on YouTube. And uh, thank you for joining me, and until we meet again.